We're here in the Jennifer Cholsky Planetarium at Liberty Science Center, the largest planetarium in the Western Hemisphere. We have a shortage of scientists in this world, and it's space that has turned so many generations onto science. I mean, the really exciting thing about space right now is the number of folks around the world who are actually doing it. It's no longer NASA having a monopoly on all the good stuff. There are international space agencies, there are observatories that are coming back with fantastic new images and, and all these planetary probes that are lined up because like Cassini and like the mission to Pluto, we've learned a whole lot of new things about the solar system and they've revealed a lot of questions that we don't have answers to yet. We have more candidates within the solar system for where we might be able to find life. Now we have to probe further to see if life indeed exists there. It's really wonderful that NASA and other organizations are making their images available in very high definition. And if we're trying to have the audience find a little tiny dot of a moon within the Keeler gap in the rings of Saturn, if you have it displayed 30 feet across in their dome, they can actually do the activity where they find that little tiny moon that's creating the gap. So you can show levels of detail that were never possible in either a smaller theater or in a theater that had less resolution in its system. What we want to do with the Jennifer Cholsky Planetarium is break astronomy news. We want this to be a venue where observatories around the world can announce results, show images. We can video conference in the astronomers from wherever they are. We want to be a venue where we're going to track what's happening in private rocketry. Folks like Richard Branson and Jeff Bezos have been to Liberty Science Center, so we'd like to track that program and all the excitement there, and when tourists will first go up in space, that will do here in the planetarium. I think it's important to build planetariums for a number of reasons. For one thing, in this day and age, with the digital revolution that began 20 years ago, anything you imagine can go into a planetarium dome now. In the old days, it was slide projectors going ka-chung, 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 and a beautiful star field. Now you can have the star field still, but immerse the audience in visual experiences and video experiences. And I think also, people just really love astronomy and space science. It may be part of our pride in the achievements of NASA over the years, the fact that we get exposed to astronomy in Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts and so forth, but people come predisposed to love astronomy. And it's a very effective way of bringing folks into science and generating interest in the sciences as a whole. So as a STEM education tool, I think it's one of the most wonderful experiences you can offer people to draw them into STEM or to continue their interest in STEM.